Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make a DIY free cycled rustic country Americana wreath. And we're going to use it doing this wire hanger. Um, we're also going to just use some scrap fabrics, whatever you have. These are denim jeans and you can use any old ripped jeans, any red sort of fabric. Um, I can link in the description box where I got all of these materials and then some white fabric. Um, there's options for lace and I'm gonna use this white burlap just to add more to the countryside. So I got inspired by this actually from Country Living Magazine. I have been a subscriber for about 25 years I feel like and um, now that they have online they actually send you emails with different articles for inspiration and this was something that they posted from a person who blogged it uh, from a blogger from 2012 and I just said oh my goodness not only do I finally have a wire hanger because one of my guests left it here <laughs> um, but um, I have all of these fabrics I have all of these scraps um, if you've been here for a while you know that I just did a DIY with all of these scraps recently so um, or these some some of these materials I take that back uh, recently so you can see here um, we've done rag wreaths before um, this was just the first one that I've ever done without a wreath form we just took the wire and we shaped it as round as we could. You may need to use some help for this. Different options for help are actually to try to get like a really big plastic Tupperware bowl and you can actually like push the wire wreath down onto the Tupperware bowl if that will help. Um, I didn't find it hard. Of course, it's going to depend on the wire hanger that you get. My wire hanger was a good medium weight. Um, and then what I did was I bent the top. Now, my Aunt Pat used to use the top as a hanger when she used to make um, wire wreath, wire hanger wreaths before. But what I did was I bent it around and we're still going to use it as a hanger sort of because we're going to use it to hang a piece of uh, burlap ribbon. Now, the burlap ribbon was not something in the directions. Um, but it's just red burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. That's what I decided to hang it by. And that again is optional. When you tie the rags on, you do sort of cover that wire. So you could just hang it from that wire if you wanted to. The rags will kind of cover that. But um, what I've done is these are pieces of jean that I have left over. Um, you know, it's so funny because we just the other day talked about throwing out things that some person may deem trash or unnecessary but I hemmed some pants for um, Evan Lisa's son Evan and that's what this dark fabric is from and Emily um, had ripped jeans that she gave me just for scraps and that's what the um, ones with the legs are as you can see when we get to them and what I'm doing is I'm just cutting um, a tiny slit which will help me pull the fabric apart if you're having dexterity issues you can just cut all the strips I cut strips anywhere from a half an inch to an inch wide I cut them about um, seven to nine inches long of course that is going to depend on your fabric and the more haphazard the lengths the the more rustic it'll look the more farmhouse and um, country it will look and the different shades of denim and the different ginghams when we get to the reds and the um the different variations on whatever you use for a white fabric is also what adds it to that very homemade country feel um, some of these were extremely long because they were just ripped fabric so I cut them down so they wouldn't be too long um, but I want to show you in case you have like some ripped pants like maybe you cut them into shorts and you have some legs left over what do you do so I'm just showing you here this is the best way to see the technique I'm just cutting up an inch or two and then just ripping and pulling it apart Sometimes we talked about before in our other rag wreaths that when you rip the fabric it has a tendency to go with the grain and your grain might be off. So I always recommend cutting one, uh, ripping one piece first and then um, seeing from there, you know, how it rips. Um, but really if you put your little snips an inch apart and only cut them in about a half an inch to an inch, it won't make a difference. It'll just rip in that direction for each piece, okay? Now, um, how many really depends on how wide you cut it and how big your hanger is, um, how thick your fabric is, and how full you want it. So it's really hard to say, but I will tell you that I did not use one whole fat quarter of each color. I will tell you that because um, you see what I used for the denim 
and I used up all the denim and then I'm going to cut these two gingham uh, fabrics for red and I'm going to have almost half what's left over um, and each one of these was not even a whole fat quarter because I had them left over from other projects and the same thing with the uh, burlap the burlap was actually gifted to me from Eden for her wedding last year it's what I used to cover the rustic um, backyard wedding uh, card box um, and this is what I had left over so they really are just from scraps and I say free cycled there used to be a website called free cycle there actually might still be I shouldn't say that I just don't belong to it anymore but where you know it's sort of like uh, craigslist for free stuff you know so um so stuff doesn't go in the garbage but anyway this tiny gingham is a homespun fabric and it is from walmart and so is the big gingham that was a 97 cent fat quarter but the big gingham is a printed fabric um, and then for the white i did choose like an option could be a lace doily which is what that was or um or some set of um, tooling. I had a tooling with little gold stars on it, which I thought would be darling. But then I realized, you know what? I just really love the white burlap. And you'll see um, this entire project took me one hour from setting up the camera <laughs> to ripping the fabrics to saying goodbye to Jim to going to the bathroom and everything. Um, it really did that filmed from an hour from start to finish. So, um, it's really a great sit down in front of the movie project. I put on my favorite movie of the moment, um, <laughs> The uh, Greatest Showman, and I was singing along, so I spared you guys that. Um, but you're just going to continue to rip and rip and rip. And when you do make this wreath, you want to make sure you alternate the different fabrics. So you basically don't want to put all of one type of fabric in a section and then all of another type of fabric in the section. You'll see. Um, the only thing is when I was doing the burlap, I knew I couldn't rip it. So we had to cut the burlap into strips. And I, what I did, what I'm doing there with the piece of denim is I just made one piece of denim the length that I want, like the minimum length. And I was just using that as a guide to cut the rest. All right. And the same thing with widths. I varied the widths on the, um, the burlap. But you realize when you're tying burlap, it can tend to be difficult. So maybe a little bit wider would be better if you are new to doing it. Um, this is another project that I thought was great for young kids, for people with disabilities, for people with dexterity, um, working on dexterity issues, because it is, other than, other than um, cutting the burlap and forming the wreath out of the wire hanger, it is just tying and ripping. Um, if you can get the kids, if you can start the little snips for the kids to start ripping, it is. Uh, the, the sort of the cotton fabric that's the ginghams rips real easy. I mean, the denim is a little bit tougher. So you need to be a little stronger for that. But that if you, you know, have it with little kids and you want to let them help, it's a great way to get out energy. If you're, you know, upset with your spouse, you can go ahead and <laughs> rip up all the fabrics you want. <laughs> but um, so I just continued cutting up all of the burlap. The other thing is, um, this would be really cute with lace. Uh, I, I for sure, it would. I think I kind of felt like it was um, a lot like the Valentine's Day rag wreath. Um, we used all of those different red fabrics and white lace. I thought that was so pretty, and that would be pretty too. That would add like sort of a soft, uh, a soft element to the country fabrics here. But what really makes this rustic country is the denim and the gingham and the burlap. Um, if you can just have that in any sort of capacity, like I could have done lace and burlap, that totally would have been perfectly fine. Um, you know, that wouldn't have been a problem. That would have looked good as well. So now I'm just organizing how I want to make sure I keep them in order. Um, where I start, it really is no, no point or no matter, but, um, I just started and I'm always going to slide the fabric underneath and tie the knot above. And I'll show you in the end why. Um, the person who, the blogger who inspired this, um, I will link her in, you know, her page down below or whatever. But, um, what she said was after she tied it all, she didn't really like it until she turned it over. Um, I personally like it on both sides. So I don't know if it's just that I have different fabrics or different lengths. I'm not really sure why, but I just really thought it was super, super cute. Um, and again, I have this at four times speed so that obviously I can fit it within a 15 minute video. Um, but it's 
tying and it's not even tying a knot it's just tying it one time um, I really liked the denim that I got from Emily's pants because they had like uh, spandex in them I guess because they really stretched and it was so made such nice neat knots the real heavy duty, duty denim <laughs> <laughs> um, made sort of, it was a little bit tougher to tie, but it was impossible. Um, so if you're going to do this with somebody with dexterity issues or somebody with a learning disability or children, you want to make sure you're there to help them tie the big knots. Um, and then you want to push it along as you go just to get that fullness. And again, that fullness isn't necessary. Um, if you're working with a limited budget or limited materials, then you don't have to really squish it. You, it'll still fluff out and it'll still look cute. Now, if these pieces are too long for your liking, you go ahead and use shorter pieces. As long as you have enough to tie them around the wire, that's really all that matters. I think when we did the rag wreath for the Americana rag wreath last year, um, I think we used like four, only like five inch pieces. So this would be cute with five inch pieces. I just really like the effect that she got from using kind of like longer pieces. But it would look great with five inch pieces. Absolutely. So go for that if you can, you know, and if you don't have any denim, there's lots of inexpensive. This would be really cute with the blue bandanas from the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree has bandanas in blue and red in a two pack. And then they have for the, um, with their Americana decor or patriotic decor, <coughs> excuse me, they have a American flag banner, a bandana with a blue bandana on the back. That would look super cute. Um, if you cut up the scarves that we did for the American flag yesterday that would be cute anything as long as you keep the red white and blue but I think that this particular combination really makes it feel very very farmhousey rustic country um now when I'm when I was done I ended up having oh about a quarter of my burlap left and about half of my gingham left so I may Go back and tie more onto each section. Just because the denim is so thick, it kind of does really um, stand out as the primary fabric. And because the American flag really, <laughs> the, the, the blue is the tertiary color. You know, red, I would say, is the primary color because there's more of it. Well, if you count the stars, maybe there isn't. Well, I'd say maybe they're 50-50, but... <laughs> But uh, definitely the blue is the tertiary color because it's, you know, it's hardly on the American flag. But on this rag rug, it does bring that nice denim feel to it, that very country feel to it. But I may go back and add the blue ginghams, um, the red, I'm sorry, add extra gingham to the ginghams and maybe add, tie on the rest of the burlap. I do have one more project with rags, so I might actually just leave it until I'm done with that. But you guys will see that's coming soon. Um... I kind of wanted to make June like all Americana decor, but I don't think that's going to happen. First of all, I can't afford that. <laughs> Second of all, I'm not really sure I have 30 ideas. <laughs> I have I have quite a few, but not quite 30. Um, but um, for those of you who are new around here, hi, I'm crazy. Um, no, um, what I do is I decorate for my home all summer in the Americana theme. I start right before Memorial Day and I leave it up until after Patriot Day on 9-11. I know Patriot Day in Boston is a different thing, but Patriot's Day in, is 9-11 according to the newest, latest, whatever. But um, I keep my Americana decor up all summer. Um, August is the only month that doesn't actually have an American represented holiday um, because there's Memorial Day and then Flag Day is in June and then July 4th, of course, is in July. And then between Labor Day and 9-11, um, there are two holidays in September that really have that American flag feel. So what we're going to do now is you can kind of see the hanger. All I did was bend the hanger, the portion that hangs on the rod. I just bent it down. Um, and what I'm doing now is I'm actually going in oh I'm, I'm taking that one out because I need to slide it over and make more uh, but I'm going um in the little loop like basically we took the top of the hanger we bent it over as you saw in the beginning um and it's created like a loop that we're going to hang from and it's also creating the little point so the part of the hanger top that's twisted together will kind of like stick up but we're going to cover that with the hanger um, but if you're not you can go ahead and make sure you just cover it with what you're tying but I'm not tying onto the hanger I'm tying Hanger is such a, see, there's so many words that say hanger. 
<laughs> so we're going to tie on the main portion inside of the part that we're going to hang from. Okay. And then I'm just going to give it a shake, get off all of the extra strays and any loose burlap that's going to come loose and any loose strings that are going to come loose. And now I'm just going to take this red burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. This is optional. That's why I didn't mention it in the beginning. And I'm putting it through that hanger and tying a knot at the top. Okay. And um, that's it. You can do a bow if you want to. You can glue on there if you want to. But this is it. Um, I really do. Oh, I'm just fluffing it out here. Um, just to make it zhuzhing. Zhuzhing it. That's what we do, right? Um, so that's it, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this super easy, super fast, super inexpensive um, DIY. If you have any questions at all, even the slightest, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with friends and family and anybody you know might be interested in learning how to make this, being inspired or whatever. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. And when you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out my Americana playlist. If you're new to YouTube, um, when you click on my face, you'll go to my page and there's a topic that says playlist and in there is one that says Americana. Okay. And as always, take care. God bless. I'll see you next time. Bye.